Hi, I'm Avi Bryant, and I'm going to lead you through a quick, fast-paced demo of DabbleDB. In this demo, we're going to be doing some exploration and some evolution of some legacy data in the form of a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet came out of O'Reilly. It's scheduling data for one of their open source conferences from a few years ago. And let's say that I want to be able to manage this data collaboratively over the web. Uh, I am, of course, going to bring it into Dabble. So we're going to create a new Dabble application uh, for OSCON. And we need to tell Dabble what kind of data we're going to be managing. So we're going to be managing conference sessions in this case. And once we've created that, uh, we're going to be able to either enter data from scratch or import data from an existing spreadsheet. And because we have this spreadsheet, that's what we're going to do. We can import it just with a simple copy and paste out of the spreadsheet and Dabble will create all of the required fields and create all of the required entries in the database based on the data. So what we have to do here, it's found the field names from the first column, uh, first row in the spreadsheet, so we can confirm that, and there is our data. So before we start modifying or restructuring the data at all, uh, I just want to take a chance to use Dabble to explore it a little bit. So one of the nice things about Dabble is that we can get a lot of different views on the same data, so that if we want to see what room the data is in, or who presented it, we can easily add columns for that. Uh, we can decide that we want to see it grouped by room, for example. We can also choose to filter the data down, uh, so that if we were only interested in, for example, all of the sessions that Damian Conway is uh, giving, so I think there are four of those, or maybe if we wanted to broaden that out a little bit to all of the sessions in the conference on Perl. Just do a simple keyword search on Perl, and we'll get all of those. And we can also do more structured filtering, so that if we want to see everything in a particular room, for example, here's all of the sessions that are in the Portland room that are on Perl, so it incrementally filters it down. And when we've got a view that we like, we can save it. So if we give this a name, we can say this is the Portland Perl sessions, and save that, and that'll appear now in a menu in the applications so that we can always go back to it. So let's start to evolve this data model a little bit. If we go to a specific entry, we can see that the type field is text, uh, putting in whether it's a tutorial or session or something like that. If we configure this field, we can switch it to be a choice field, which will be a menu, and it's pre-populated with all of the options that we've already got in this data. So now, if we were entering a new conference session, we would be able to pick from the list of types instead of having to type one in. And that's a very simple migration. Let's look at a slightly more interesting one. This field is showing the date and the time range for the session, and I'd like to configure that so that Dabble knows that it's a date and time field. When I do that, it's going to parse all the data. Uh, I would even understand things like next Tuesday, and it'll come up with a very structured, regular date and time range for it. But the nice thing is that now that Dabble knows that this is date data, there's lots of new things that it can do with it. So, so far we've been looking at things in a table view, but we now automatically also have a calendar view of the same data. And the filters are still on here, so we're looking at the Perl and uh, Portland, Perl sessions in the Portland room. If we go down to a week view, we can see the detailed scheduling information here. And we can explore the data in the same way here as we could in the table view. So we could change this to look at all of the Python sessions in the Portland room, for example. Or we could take off the room filter and see all of the Python sessions in the entire conference. Now, having made this modification to the view, we might want to save it under a new name. So we can call this the Python calendar. And once we've saved that, then anyone will be able to, again, find this under the menu and go back to the same view. So I want you to imagine that we're a few weeks along and we're starting to think about preparing the programs for this conference and we realize that we want to capture bio information for each of the presenters giving these sessions. Now we could add this as a field to session, but the problem with that is that when we've got someone like Damian Conway, who's teaching four separate sessions, adding it as a field to session is going to be a lot of work. We're going to have to put it in four separate times. So what we actually want to do is to change the structure of this data so that rather than having presenter name on session, we actually extract out presenter to be separate entries in the database. And they need to be in a new category, uh, we can call it person. So Dabble will do that migration for you. It'll create the new person category, and it'll populate it from the text field, so that now instead of text under presenter, we've got these links. And if we follow the link, then we'll see a brand new category, and we've got, instead of a list of all the sessions, we've got a list of all the persons. 
and we've got an edit form for person, we can now just very easily add a bio field too. So we could now go to each of these person entries and we could fill in their bio. Now these links are two-way. It knows that because the session is linked to the person, that the person is also linked back to the session. And we can see over on the right here a list of the sessions that this person is involved in. So we can go back there and we'll be back at our session view. Now that we've made that change, it's a little bit funny that the company field is still on session. That's really something that should also be associated with the presenter. And that's a change that we can make too. So if we go to configure the company field, let's just rename it to straight company and we can change it from belonging to session to belonging to person. And Dabble will figure out where all the data needs to move so that when we now go back and look at the presenters, they've all got the right companies. And we can of course do the same sorts of things with this person view as we could do with the session view. So we can add a column for company, uh, we could do grouping and filtering and all that kind of thing as well. There's something else that I'd like to show you, which is that if we save this view, Devil has, as well as ways to get the data in, a lot of different ways to get the data out. So each save view has a bunch of different export formats associated with it. If we bring up the export tab, we can get RSS, PDF, CSV for looking at an Excel. If there were date formats, we could get iCal, and there's a bunch of other formats. RSS is great because if we're working on something collaboratively with someone, we can get notifications in our newsreader of whenever they've made a change or added some new data. For those of you who are really into the mashups, we're also going to offer a full two-way Atom API shortly after the public release. So that's about all the time that I have for this demo, but uh, come visit us at dabbledb.com to find out more. Thank you.